Here at Nomad Capitalist, we help people move themselves, their bank accounts, their businesses, their investments, even their citizenships overseas, guided by our five magic words, go where you're treated best. And one of the things that I've seen in working with folks from all over the world is that folks in the Western world love the idea of legally reducing their taxes or having more freedom. But one thing that sometimes holds folks from this part of the world back is the idea that some other country, that place where you're going to be treated best, is corrupt. And so today, I want to ask the question, does corruption matter? Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist, and we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs legally go offshore get their bank accounts, get their companies, get their second passports, and go where they're treated best. You can learn what we do at nomadcapitalist.com. And what I want to talk about today is this idea that corruption is some rampant force that exists everywhere else except where you live. You know, one of the things that I know firsthand growing up in the United States is politicians in the Western world, particularly in the English-speaking Western world, use this great sense of superiority where they go out and tell the flocks, we are better than everyone else. We've created a better mousetrap than everyone else. And for some people, that's true. But as we see the death of the West, as we see incredibly high tax rates, as we see you didn't build that and, and confiscatory rates of taxation that are only going higher in coming years, new wealth taxes, new wealth grabs, new levels of regulation and erosion of freedoms, for a lot of folks, the West is not where you can be treated best. But here's the challenge that I run into sometimes with folks, is if you grew up in a country that said, we're number one, we're the best, we're better than all of those savages. You know, I grew up hearing about American exceptionalism on my television. There's no place better in the history of the world. Now, you have people on television who don't even know what happened 50 years ago, who are telling you, in the history of mankind, there's never been a better country in the world to live in. Maybe the Phoenicians had it better. Who knows, you know, maybe the Sumerians. These people don't know, but they're very confident in brainwashing the population that everyone else is savages and we have the best. And so when people come to me and ask, Andrew, I'd like to go and save, my, uh, save money on taxes. I don't want to pay 50% in tax, but we've got a pretty good deal here because our country's not corrupt. I take a two-prong approach to that. Number one, your country's a lot more corrupt than you think. I recently did some research, and I'm interested in sharing it with you. If you'd like to hear more, just leave a comment in the comment section. Show me the corruption, and we'll consider making some more videos with a lot of the stories that get sent to me. But you go and look. Everything on the high levels, from the fact that it costs basically a billion dollars to be elected president of the United States today, and the fact that people like Hillary Clinton go out and make six- and seven-figure sums to give one speech, uh, I can tell you, Hillary Clinton ain't that fascinating to listen to that I'm gonna pay a million dollars for 45 minutes. But that's the high level. All the way down to the low level, when I was leaving the United States a number of years ago, the county that I grew up in, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, where Cleveland is, had a big corruption scandal where people were getting arrested in the government left and right for just really stupid stuff. I mean, county commissioners were doing bid rigging in exchange for free granite countertops. Like, how low rent are you? So at the high levels and the low levels, you see it, okay? Your country is not this great beacon of anti-corruption. In fact, most Western countries, the United States included, continue to drop in the anti-corruption rankings for many years in a row now. You see New Zealand, you see Denmark, you see a couple of other Western countries that are legitimately not corrupt at the top of the list. But most of the countries people are interested in uh, have some corruption. You know, People will come to me from the United States and they'll say, you know what, Andrew, I'm not moving to one of those corrupt cesspools. My wife and I want to move to Italy, one of the most corrupt countries in Europe, or Greece, an even more corrupt country in Europe. And so there's really this issue of um, a bias a familiarity bias, where if you feel you know something, or if you do know something, i.e. you've grown up around it, or you've seen it well advertised on TV, if it's the brand name we talk about, you seem to, sw to sweep the corruption under the rug and just point over there. It's really a great tactic of Western politicians, and I guess politicians anywhere, to point and say, it's that guy's fault. He's much worse than we are. And so if you look at it from that perspective, if you look at the fact that you know, in many Western countries where people that we help come from, there's already a lot of corruption. But here's the other way I look at it. Uh, 
On, in terms of other countries, we've seen countries, Georgia is the one we've talked about a lot, there are others uh, that have come and that were very corrupt and that still aren't perfect, but that have made improvements. You know, Mikhail Saakashvili was the president of Georgia. He's speaking at our conference, Nomad Capitalist Live, and he came in, fired the entire police department, blew up entire divisions, made all the uh, government buildings, namely police, security, etc., a glass with the image of transparency. And so there are countries around the world that are like that, that have been corrupt, and they want to improve because they realize as small countries, they need to improve to be successful and to uh, bring business, to bring wealth. They want to rise their fortunes, and so that's the way to do it. And so there are places like that that are some of the safest countries in the world, uh, that are some of the uh, least corrupt countries in the world. You know, Singapore is one. You know, you can go and put your money in Singapore banks. You can go and live in Singapore. You can go and invest in Singapore. Uh, you're going to be just fine, better than pretty much anywhere else uh, in the world. Okay. And so there are plenty of non-corrupt places. Obviously, there are corrupt places. If you look at the list of corrupt countries, on the bottom of the list, you have places like Sudan. You can go back and look at, at almost 1,000 videos and almost 2,000 blog posts. I ain't never said anybody ever moved to Sudan or started a bank account in Sudan. All right, We're not talking about doing that. So obviously, there are corrupt countries in the world, but there are plenty of countries that have made dramatic improvements. But here's the other thing. Okay? We also talk about compartmentalizing your life and compartmentalizing the way you run your business. There's no perfect place for everything. That's why we say go where you're treated best. Where's the best place to bank? For each person, it's going to be different, but for you, it might be Singapore. Okay, you're going to be fine. The banks are stable, no corruption, the country has no net debt. I bet that's a lot better than wherever it is that you're living right now in a country that has debt and where you know politicians are for sale to the highest bidder. So that may be the best place to bank. Now, is that the best place to live? Well, for a lot of people, it's not. But you can go and live somewhere else. And so, you know, I live and I spend part of my time in countries that may have according to these rankings, some level of, level of corruption. And some of these countries I have spent you know, five years or even 10 years uh, visiting and spending time in, sometimes like on a property there. Do you know how much effect I've seen from the whatever corruption may exist in that country? Zero. I don't see it, right? The same way that if you visited New York or if you spent three months a year living in your winter home in Los Angeles, you wouldn't care that it costs a billion dollars to be elected president. Now, obviously, the United States and, and larger countries like that perhaps have a bigger influence on the world than a small country, like the places that I talk about, the Montenegros, for example, of the world, the Malaysias, right? Those countries aren't as impactful on the world stage. But you know, if the countries that you go and spend your time in have corruption, and you're living in what I call the nomad bubble, you're not going to realize it. Right? And in fact, in some cases, if you're running a business, now I generally work with people who their business sits in the cloud or they've got a business in the country where they come from. I encourage young entrepreneurs who want to go to these emerging countries and start businesses to do that. They're generally not our clients. Right? So I can tell you this though, the people I know who are doing business in places where grease payments are the norm get stuff done a lot faster. Um, I know a guy who builds buildings in Eastern Europe, and you know, he said, uh, whenever I want to get the internet installed, I call my guy at the utility company. I say, hey, I've got 100 bucks for you. He comes over and installs the internet next day. I'll bet if you're living in a lot of countries in the West, you'd like to be able to pay someone 100 bucks and install internet in your entire building. Fast, beautiful internet, you know, less than 24 hours later, for the low, low, low price of $100. Uh, now, certainly that can be a slippery slope and it can work against you, but you know, <laughs> when you look at uh, the price of alleged non-corruption in places like Los Angeles, where it takes years to get a building permit, and there's plenty of corruption going on there anyway, I look at it and say, you know what, maybe places where people are, you know, a little incentive going on isn't the worst thing. Um, but you know, generally speaking, I don't deal with corruption. I don't see it. Because if I'm going to incorporate my business somewhere, I have an online business or I have a, a business that rests you know, above any one country, I'm going to choose a place that's not corrupt. I'm going to choose a place that treats me best with very low or no taxes, you know, good governance, easy to deal with. I'm not incorporating my business in the Congo, nor am I going to bank there. But I might live in a place and I might spend my time in a place, whether it's a tourist or on some kind of residence permit, maybe that residence permit requires a small investment. Maybe that country has its share of corruption you're probably not going to see it. Okay? And again, you don't want to go to the absolute worst cases where you literally have to you know, pay just to drive down the road. 
But even those stories, I think, you know, I know people who go to Iran, I know people who go to places in all over Africa. This idea that just to get through the guy at the airport, you've got to, you know, pay a hundred bucks and like, you know, know the code is overblown. And so I think that, you know, what being in over a hundred countries has taught me is that there are a lot of similarities in the world and you can function in any of them. Obviously, you want to pick the best place. Again, for incorporation, for putting your money in places, you, of course you want to make the right choice. You want to find places that are safe. But in terms of not being willing to physically move out of a country because your country is the panacea, uh, I think that really sums up my thoughts uh, on why the world is so open for you. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.